How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Outstanding. Hey, I do want to ask, uh, is there anybody here this morning that has lost somebody that served? A friend, a relative? Could you just stand up for a minute? I, I just, I want to honor you guys because your loved one paid the sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice that's been paid that you guys live with every day. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's a few other announcements I do want to hit on this morning. Um, man, that, that video tore me up. <clears throat> First off, I do want to hit on the, the connection card. It's really important that you fill that bad boy out. I know we talked about it a lot, but the whole purpose of us coming to church on Sunday is so we can show up, recharge, be around like-minded Christians who are here to support and take care of each other. We can't do that if we love you. We want to laugh with you when you laugh. We want to pray with you when, you when you need prayer. And we want to cry with you when you when you need to cry. And it's just so important that we keep that information updated because sometimes we might go to look for somebody and we can't get hold of them. So just take a minute and, and make sure and fill that thing out. It's, it's a lot more than just uh, we want to know who, who was here today. It, it's a vital, vital tool for us. Also... Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's uh, Michael's last day, or last Sunday with us. Um, he is moving, I believe, to, to Florida. Is that correct? So he will be leaving us. There's a plaque out front if you guys want to sign off on it and, and wish him well. Um, make sure and grab him before you get out of here today. Give him a big squeeze and a thank you. He uh, is kind of the, the mastermind, the maestro back there that, that makes, uh, I know, myself and the, the worship team look awesome so it, he's definitely going to be missed make sure and stop off and tell him um also do want to mention kids camp hey if you guys know somebody that w that has some kids uh, a couple of kids that, that might need or want to go to kids camp and maybe they can't afford it that's kind of a barrier for them catch me after uh service today and let me know about that and see if there's there's some things we can do to make that happen i would hate for uh money to be something that would keep these kids from experiencing this blessing. So just let me know. Catch me after service. Uh, but getting on to the message, today we are continuing our series on uh, in, uh, surviving our finances. And it's been a pretty interesting series. At least I hope that you have found it uh, interesting so far. You know, we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about getting out of debt. We've talked about the importance of having a plan for our business that God has given us. We've talked about uh, generously giving to each other, to our community. Today, we're going to talk about investing eternally. And I know what everybody's thinking right now. He said investing eternally, but what he's really talking about is we're going to hear for the, the next 20, 30 minutes about how we need to give money to the church. And, and I want you guys to know something. That's not what we're talking about. I know where you're coming from. You know, I don't have the story of, of coming to Christ at 15 years old and being on the Jesus wagon, yay, Jesus, my whole life. Um, truth be told, you know, I was raised Catholic. I was a good Catholic. I went to church uh, on all the major holidays and made uh, confession at least once a year. So I really didn't get on board with this until, uh, until in my 30s. As a result... I was one of those guys that any time somebody wanted to start talking about investing in the church, investing eternally, giving money to God, I was usually in the back and I would just very quietly excuse myself because I didn't want to hear it. And I just want to be real clear this morning. You know, I didn't say we're talking about giving money to the church. I'm, I'm talking about investing eternally. And, you know, it's easy to be jaded on this subject. It really is. And I understand that, you know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I lived in Victoria, and we were very much a, pretty much a segregated community when it came to religion. You were Catholic or you were Baptist. We didn't, non-denominational, we didn't even know what that meant. You picked a side, and that's all there was to it. It was kind of like living in Ireland without the bombings. We had uh, a preacher move in to town. I believe he was from Houston. And, man, he showed up, and he had a jag, and his wife 
had the nicest Mercedes, and they started this church. And that church was all about money. And it was really at a time when a lot of people took religion and stepped away from what I consider to be the goal of the church, which, what should be the goal of the church, which is advancing the word of God, and they really turned it into an enterprise. I remember looking, I attended one service, and that's the first thing I thought. I was like, man, this isn't, this isn't about a business of bringing people to God. This is a business about being in business. And as a result, we tend to get jaded about that. I mean, how many people have turned on the TV? Have y'all seen that magic water that one preacher sells? <laughs> if you just send him some money, he's got some magic water he's going to send you. Or maybe he's got a book. Or maybe he's got a special prayer team that has special power, but you've got to send him some money. I get that. I get that. But that's not what we're talking about. And maybe more importantly, that's not the church you're attending today. And so I really want to talk about this. If you don't want to give to this church, that's fine. But I want you to understand something. You can't stop this church. I believe that wholeheartedly. You can't stop this church. I've worked for the last year or so shoulder to shoulder with the, with the preaching pastors. And I want you to know you can't stop them. I've worked shoulder to shoulder with the executive pastors and the, and the pastoral team. They can't be stopped. It's not about money. Now, sure, we may not be able to keep meeting here, but we're going to continue to meet. We'll go somewhere else. And if we can't find anywhere else to go, we'll go to, we'll go to somebody's house. But the church, this church, will not be stopped. So I don't want you guys to be thinking, you know, well, we're talking about giving money to the church because the whole idea is to enrich the people that are at this church. We don't go to this church. That's not the type of church this is. You know, our, our head pastor doesn't drive a Jaguar. He drives a Chevy pickup truck, which I know, it's a Chevy, but... <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm fairly certain, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm fairly certain that his wife makes more money than he does. That, that is not the goal of this church. You know, you would be amazed at how few people get paid to be here on Sunday. Not just this location, but in Taylor, in Gerald. And you would be really amazed at the small check that those people that do get paid get, how much of that goes back to this church. So when we're talking about this today, when we're talking about investing eternally, we're not talking about making the church successful. We're not. We're talking about making you successful so you can make the church successful. We're not talking about giving money to the church. We're talking about giving money back to God because it's his anyways. It's all his. He's just letting us use it. And, you know, I got to tell you, that's a hard concept to get your head around. I know that was a hard thing for me to get my head around. As I've said before, this has been a, a challenging series for me. Uh, and I think it's a challenging series for a lot of people because money's money. We can talk about giving a lot of stuff, but when we talk about money, that's a whole different subject. So it, it's not for the church, it's for God. It's so we can do God's work, so we can fulfill, all of us can fulfill God's plan, his will. You know, if we look at uh, Leviticus chapter uh, 27, verse 30, we'll read... A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. A tithe. That is a tenth. A tenth of everything belongs to God. Now here's some amazing facts. The average Christian gives about 2% of his income. 2%. Now, the next one is even more surprising. Fewer than 3% of Christians tithe, meaning that they give 10% of their, of their uh, wages. Only 3%. Now, I know a lot of you right now are saying, Brian, that makes sense because I can promise you only about 3% of the congregation can afford to do that. That's a pretty uh, compelling argument, I would think, unless... You think this way, 
What if the reason why they are able to tithe is because they started when they really couldn't? They took that leap of faith. And God has blessed them. And so, yes, they're very successful. But it's because they started when they weren't. They can afford to do that now, and it's easy to look at it. But I guarantee you, if you think about it or you go talk to these folks, they're going to tell you, I've been doing that for a while. Even when we couldn't do it, been doing it for a long time. So we had talked last week about two kinds of businesses. There were two kinds of business, or, or God had given us a business to run. And we have two kinds of businesses to look at. Now, the first is a cursed business. And if we look at Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, we read, Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You're under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. We're robbing God. I don't like to hear that. As a matter of fact, really, if you look at that word, rob, what it translates out to is to defraud or to spoil or, more directly and to the point, to embezzle. We're embezzling from God. Now, see, and that, that hurts me. That hurts me to hear that because, you know what? I would never steal from my boss, ever. I work for probably the coolest guys around in Austin. I would never in a million years steal from him. Matter of fact, I spend a lot of my time making sure nobody else is stealing from him because he's such an awesome person. If you just put in the work for him, he'll give you whatever you need. And that's the way it is with God. That's exactly the way it is with God. We, we tend to make a bad trade in life when we decide to embezzle, when we decide to, to not give. We're making a bad trade. We're trading right now for eternity. We're, we're, we want right now what we want instead of waiting for it and getting the blessing. You know, I remember reading a story about uh, a, a fella in New York was quite ingenious. He was looking to make some cash. So if anybody's ever been to New York, you know you got the guy and it's no joke. Psst, you want to buy a watch? They're all over the place. And so what this guy did is he, ran out, he went out and he bought a bunch of computers. And he put them in boxes. And then he went and got some, uh, some stretch wrap, heat wrap. And he, he made those boxes look like they were brand new. And what he did was, then he got a really nice computer. And he put it up on display. And everybody that walked by, he's like, hey, I've got these computers for sale. And they'd mess around with this display computer. They'd buy a computer. Well, guess what? They got home and it didn't work. It was a piece of junk. And of course, by the time you go back to catch this guy, it's New York. He's gone. Never to be seen from again. That's what we do. That's the choice we make. We see a bright, shiny thing and we think we're getting a great deal. And we're happy until we get home and start utilizing it and we find out we made a bad trade. It wasn't worth it, because what we, what we decided we had to have right now, it wasn't really worth it. So we have this cursed business, and if we, if we read Haggai, uh, chapter 1, verse 6, this pretty much spells it out. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Man, how many people can relate to that? I mean, don't, do you ever feel like that? I know I do sometimes. Just you're spinning your wheels. You're putting in all the effort and putting in all the effort. But no matter what, you, you, I, and I love the way it says that. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. It's going out as fast as it's coming in. Time and time again. And it's because 
We are operating under a cursed business. Now, if we look at the blessed business, and we read Malachi 3, uh, verses 11 and 12, we read that I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, says the Lord Almighty, and then all the nations will call you blessed. So right here, God's telling us, I'll bless you. I'll take care of you. While other people are going through strife, you're not going to have that same strife. I'm not saying you're not going to have any strife. That's not the way it works. But you're not going to have the same strife. He's going to bless you. You know, there's a saying, Daryl loves to say this, you know, you can, you can live 90% with God's blessing, and it's far more than trying to live 100% without it. It's just not going to be the same. You're not going to have that same blessing. And I want to ask you a question this morning. How much do we pay in taxes? 20%? If you're an independent business, you're paying closer to 30, 36% in taxes? I mean, it's crazy, right? How about when, uh, when we go out for dinner? When we go out for dinner, how much do we tip our wait staff? 15%? Maybe 20 if they did a really good job. Boy, that tea glass stays full. We're going we're to give up an extra 5% for them. How about when we go to the barber? Or for you ladies, the hairstylist, whatever you'd like to call it. We tip them, don't we? And it's, us <laughs> and it's usually about 15%, maybe more. The reason why I bring this up is because this is, this is what really hits home. We tip people in our lives more than what we're willing to pay God on Sunday. We're willing to tip for a service more than we're willing to pay for a blessing. And that's why he says we're, we're embezzling. We're embezzling from him. And look what God says. Read Malachi 3, verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. How much of it? The whole tithe into the storehouse. That there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing, you will not have room for it. Man. Test me on this. You know what's the only time you're going to read in the Bible that God says, test me? He is telling everybody exactly what anybody else that issues you a challenge is saying. Put your money where your mouth is. Test me. And here's the beauty of it. He doesn't say it's going to get a little better. He doesn't say it might be okay. I will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing you will not have enough room for it. That is a promise. That is a promise and he's saying you don't believe me, try me, test me. I always talk to uh, a, a lot of atheists. I always end up talking to a lot of atheists. And one of the conversations... We always have, you know, they'll get to running down God, they'll get to running down Christ, and they'll start picking and choosing verses out of the Bible. And one of the things I always ask them is, okay, have you studied the Bible? Well, what do you mean? Well, have you tried it? Well, you know, I've read parts of it. No, no, have you, have you tried it? Well, I went to, you know, church when I was a kid with some friends and it didn't really do anything for me. No, that's not what I'm asking. Have you tried it? Have you put the effort in to see if there's any validity to what's in this book? Well, no, they haven't. Time and time again. They don't want to try it. See, Christianity has never been tried and found wanting. Christianity has been found hard and not tried. And so we find time and time again, the atheist, he wants to run down all the things, why God's so terrible, but he's never tried. He's never given God a chance. And this is what God is telling us, his, his followers, his believers. Have you tried? Have you just, have you just put it out there? 
And most of us are going to say, no, man, I haven't. I haven't. And that's why, you know, we've got this big tithe challenge going on. I encourage everybody, try it. 90 days. 90 days, test God. And that's what he's saying. I mean, it's right there, black and white. Test me on this. Test me. I encourage you, try it and see if he doesn't bless you. Because, you know, the, the crazy thing is, tithing is the starting point. It really is. If we read Matthew 23, 23 and 24, we, we see we're right here at this point, Christ is, is giving the Pharisees a hard time. Because the Pharisees were always really good about giving up their cash. They never had a problem giving a tenth of whatever it was. They'd give a tenth. And, and look what he tells them. You give a tenth of your spice, your mint, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law. Justice, mercy, faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. See, it's, it's just the starting point. It's tithing. The New Testament, Christ always took it up a notch. He said, Old Testament says don't murder. Christ says don't hate. Old Testament says don't commit adultery. Christ came in and said don't lust. Old Testament says you need to tithe. Christ saying, no, you need to tithe and you need to go out and have justice and mercy and faithfulness. It's the starting point. It's the jump off point of where we need to be at. And you know, I got to ask this morning, how many people are waiting for something to happen? Just waiting for something big, some big event so they can start their lives. And I don't care how old you are, I think you know what I'm talking about. You're waiting for that promotion. You're waiting for that raise. Oh, when I get out of debt. When I get out of debt, it's gonna be okay. When I get my inheritance, then I can start. We're waiting for something. It's never gonna happen. It's not. Because we're doing the wrong thing. See, we're, we're waiting. We're sitting in one spot and waiting for something to happen. And then we'll get started. And the whole time, our life is passing before our eyes. And we're sitting in one spot and we're waiting. You know what I'm talking about? See, what God is telling us is, take a step. Take a step in faith. Test me on this. It's no different than when we gave our lives to Christ. You know, Christ had been in our lives. He was in the, in the sidelines saying, hey, choose me. Invite me in. I'm here. All I need you to do is say, please come into my life. And we did that. We made that choice. And what happened? Boom, he's there. We see a change in our life. We see a change in our attitude. We see a change. I don't know about for everybody, but I, I see a change in the way people treat me. This is the same thing. We're waiting for a blessing. We're waiting and waiting, and waiting for a blessing. And God's saying, take another step. Take another step of faith. Trust in me. If you want the blessing, be the blessing. If you will be the blessing, I promise you, I'll give you more of a blessing. I will overflow you with blessings. And that's what it's about. You know, God is not a God of, eh, just enough to get by. That's not the God we serve. We serve the abundant God, the God of more than enough. And all he's saying is, give me a chance. Test me. Test me on it. And you say, Brian, it's not that easy. It is that easy. I'm going to show you how easy it is. And, and this, is, this, this is no joke. It's just this easy. You take out your checkbook. Where do I got my pen? You take out your checkbook. Can I borrow your pen? And you write a check. Now, you say, Brian, that's real simple for you. No, it's not. I got to do this four times. And I can guarantee you I don't have the money to do this. But I'm going to write a check. And I'm going to trust that God is going to be there for me. Because he says he will. And I am not kidding. 
My wife is going to have a coronary when she gets done with this service. But you take it and you say, you know what, God? You got me. I know you got me. And I trust that you got me. And we're going to give it a whirl for 90 days, Lord. For 90 days, I'm yours. I trust you with my life. I always have time for you. I always have love for everybody. Now I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit myself where it hurts. I'm going to hit myself in my pocketbook. And I'm going to trust you that just like I can't outlove you and I can't give more time than you have for me to give, I'm going to trust that you are not going to let me lose my house when all these checks clear. You're going to be there for me. But that's how much I believe because the Lord loves a cheer, cheerful giver and he's promised he'll do it. And so I, I challenge every one of you guys, give it a whirl. Try. Prove God to be a liar and I can promise you, you will find out he is not one. He would not have said, test me on this if he did not plan on delivering you wholly, fully, 100%. Will you pray with me? Lord, we come to you this morning and we're searching. We're searching, Lord, because you know we have time and we have love. But man, Lord, when it comes to our money, and that's the problem, isn't it? It's your money. Change our heart, Lord. Soften our hearts. Let us give back what is already yours. Let us lose the fear attached to our bank account, Lord. Let us see that you've done so well with our lives thus far. Help us take it to a different level. Show us your glory and, and show us that you are the faithful God that you promised to be. So Lord, I just, I just ask you to touch every person's heart here. Overflow them with joy and more, more importantly, Lord, overflow them with confidence. Give them the peace that they need, and the comfort. And Lord, as we go out into the week, let us show the love of your Son to every person in this community. Let us walk in your light and help us find your path for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.